Somebody who's been to the FDR Memorial, describe that one. An experience, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, it is, what does it look like? I mean, what is, how big is it? Huge. It's larger than life. Okay, larger it's than life. Through it, I mean, and it's the different acts, like and time it's periods of his up life. By his different period, I mean, it's okay. Up. So it's how much, I mean, it, it covers a, a fairly large spread of ground. It covers different phases of his life. The centerpiece is... Yeah, exactly. It's him in his wheelchair. I think he's got his dog, Fala, yeah. which is always a crossword puzzle answer, F-A-L-A, -A, if that comes up. Why is this here if we have a perfectly good memorial over by the tidal basin? The money? Pardon me? <laughs> the money? Um, this one was earlier. Yeah, this one's first. I mean, that's a good question, but like, this one is actually first. Um, and this was the one that FDR suggested during his lifetime. He had been elected president four times. It, was, it, it seemed more likely than not that he might someday get a memorial. And when asked what would be an appropriate way to commemorate his life as a public servant, he, uh, I believe he was in the Oval Office, and he said, uh, a block of uh, marble the size of this desktop with my name and my birth date and placed at the National Archives. Right? He thought that, which is, I think, very understated. Um, you know, he picked the location, he picked the design, and that's exactly what you've got. The FDR memorial at the Tidal Basin is totally different. Uh, and in so much as he told us exactly what he wanted, kind of flies in the face of his, his wishes and his explicit instructions. Uh, and there's a further twist there. And if you remember back to the second week when Michael O'Malley came in and talked about political theater, uh, the centerpiece of the, the memorial at the Tidal Basin is FDR in his wheelchair. For a president who went to such enormous lengths over the course of his entire political career to never be photographed in his wheelchair. And remember Professor O'Malley talking about, you know, how he would set up rails, uh, you know, so that he could appear to walk to the podium, or that he could carry himself to the podium. He had a car outfitted with hand controls. I mean, this is not just someone who didn't make a big deal about the fact that he was in a wheelchair. This is someone who went to great lengths to disguise that fact. And that's a great point to talk about, you know, who is this memorial for? Is it for, um, is it for the person? Is it for the, the, the generation um, for whom uh, he was such a central figure? There's a whole generation of Americans for whom, you know, he guided them through the Depression and the Second World War. Is the memorial for them? Is the memorial for us, for, for contemporary generations who are, who are trying to place him in a historical context? And those are really useful questions, and they're, they're transportable. You can ask those questions about any monument, any place. Why do we do that? You gotta teach now. Okay. I mean, but the other memorials are supposed to be a teaching memorial. Like, uh, okay. this is, this I think was probably done fairly close after his death. I would imagine. It's designed, it's not designed you know. to teach. I know. Okay. You know why? Why? Look There's a little marker right oh, there that wow. explains. It was put. It was put in by friends of his 20 year on the 20th anniversary of his death. Oh, so not that. 65. Yeah. Um. Is that the right thing to do? I mean, to go and sort of, when somebody says, this is how I want to be commemorated, and you say, yeah, all right, uh, we're going to do something different. You know? It depends on who it's for. Okay. If you're doing it for that person, yes. The other memorial is not for him. Right. So who is it for? Everybody else. Uh, that could be a, a glib but accurate answer. I mean, but it's for people who haven't, who didn't experience New Deal programs. I mean, we're talking about at this point. You know, I had the reality check that I am now wholly in a totally different generation than my students this year. Their great grandparents, their their great grandparents fought in World War II, versus my grandparents, and then their grandfathers fought in Vietnam, whereas my father fought in Vietnam. And so, you know, you've got so many people who are so far removed at this point that. This isn't going to teach them who Franklin Roosevelt was. Is that what a memorial is supposed to do? Um, that's, I think, what the goal of the other memorial is. I mean, this is where you get into the sort of interesting, undefined territory of what do we want to use this space for?